Yeah, Bart, can I just put a break on that? Where would you recommend someone new starts? And I mean, you've mentioned a few certs. Is there, can you give us like a quick overview of the certs and what you would recommend perhaps someone starts with and sort of a path if there is such a thing? Sure. So if you're interested in getting into Amazon Web Services, um, <clears throat> all of the regular IT background training applies here. If you can do your A plus and your Net plus, um, and you have those backgrounds, then you're in a position to consider which AWS search to possibly move into. If you're not sure what the HTTP protocol even is, or if you're not <laughs> familiar with basic ISP architectures, or if you don't know what the word WAN stands for, then this might be a sign that you're not ready to move into the cloud world. And you ought to take a look at those network plus types of levels first and build upon that. After that, the way that Amazon does it, they're really kind of broken into a couple of key things. At the heart of all their certifications is what they call the well-architected framework. And it's just a bunch of best practices. It tells us like things like how to deal with session state, um, how to configure load balancers and scaling groups. All good things that, get this, apply to Azure. They apply to Google that works in AWS. It works with OpenStack. So any of those vendors, you can use those same types of skills. It's not going to be EC2, but you're still going to have those principles there. So, well, it's crazy because you're saying that, and like you said, those terms, and I can visualize exactly what the Azure yeah. service is because it sounds like it's like they're copying each other. It's, it's so true. Funny. And there is a lot of keeping up with the Joneses that other vendors are doing, and I think that that's fine. Amazon did that with all the hypervisors originally, too. VMware had all these features, and AWS didn't have them. So they added a bunch of stuff to get up to speed with it dynamic modeling, um, the ability to move servers back and forth, all of this live migration stuff that they support. So they went and they added all of that. Now, <clears throat> back to David's question. Um, architecting is meant as your essentials one. Um, the associate would be the one to first start with. But there are actually some beginner certs. You've got the um, cloud practitioner is the first one. And the cloud practitioner is kind of instant. This is the one that kind of just says, what is the cloud? How do you sell the cloud? What do businesses need to know about it? So that's a good one to start with. And then after that, the more technical one is tech essentials. And Tech Essentials is supposed to be the one that says, okay, this is what all of the services are that most people use. So they go over virtual machines, your compute, your network, your basic storage services, things you have to know to use almost any of the other products. So those are really the first ones you'd want to look at. After that, consider your job role. Are you going to be designing um, networks and solutions based on feedback from design teams? Uh, do you want to write software that would live in a cloud environment? Do you want to be an engineer who responds to tickets in your cloud environment? Based on those different types of categories, you'd either choose to be an architect to design and implement and provide oversight, uh, a sysops engineer or a devops engineer to respond to trouble tickets and help put out fires, or you'd want to go down the developer devops track if you want to write software that's going to run in the cloud. So that's basically how they've built those out. So would you say that a CCNA level knowledge is good enough to jump into the cloud or or do you need to, does someone need to study more than that? I think that if you have your CCNA and you're able to um, read through some basic information online about cloud services like infrastructure, platform, and software, if that makes basic sense to you, you're ready to start considering the tech essentials or one of the architect certs for sure. Um, Amazon does a good job of including a lot of that. Now, if you take my CBT Nugget classes, we do things in different uh, in, in our kind of a build up model. If you take the AWS training, they will build it up on top of it as well. So they'll help kind of guide you through that process. But yeah, CCNA is a great place to start. So one of the first networking certs that I ever had too. Um, it's a great place to start. And the thing about too, David, networking is easily one of the weakest skills that cloud practitioners have. So we see a lot of developers are out there writing apps. They're comfortable with what their code does and these functions that they're dealing with maybe the environment they immediately touch, but they couldn't tell you how the traffic moves and they don't understand differentiate services and they don't understand pathing or load balancing. So there is a huge um, gap in the skills um, in the networking world. So for you guys that have that networking expertise, it's gonna benefit you everywhere. I think it's the most important of all the IT skills to have. Even the compute stuff isn't as important as getting the network parts right, especially if you wanna move into the cloud. Um, when I talk about cloud, there's three big technologies. The first one I always say is automation. Automation has been around a long time. Um, wide area networking is the other big one. And then the third one is every flavor of virtualization you can imagine. I don't mean just server VMs. I also mean the idea of like abstraction, like using drivers to hide hardware from operating systems. All of those concepts 
are at work in the cloud. So if you're comfortable with those models, you're, you're, you're in good shape. You got that networking background, you'd be ready to go and dig into AWS and start working through it. You know, uh, Bart, when I first started with um, Azure, one thing I found shocking, and it wasn't shocking for me because I've, I've had a lot of the server experience, but if you just had the CCNA and you knew networking, but you didn't know very much about Windows servers or even Linux, um, I think jumping into like something like the cloud, like AWS or Azure, might be kind of daunting because you don't understand all the facets of storage and, and how virtual machines yeah. exactly work. What would you recommend to get spun up on that really quickly? Um, you know, those CompTIA certs are definitely the ones that I always come back to. Uh, the A+, plus and the Net+, plus, those were the very first ones that I ever got. After that, they led me on to Cisco certs and things like that. But they gave me the background that I needed, so I understand how paging works and memory uh, comp, uh, contention and CPU buses. Um, and then local storage versus network attached storage and how problems arise as we start trying to share the network with other types of traffic. So those certs, I think, are all really well positioned. And I think that's why those names are so recognizable and they're still around um, for all these years. So I think that those certs are the best ones to start with. And if you're finding that um, you want a more formal education, you can certainly go to colleges and schools to get network technology degrees that'll put you in those positions. Just be careful. Make sure that that's something that's appropriate for you. And um, consider, too, that they help you with positioning yourself afterwards. I think that's a big critical thing a lot of universities struggle with. So make sure that if you do choose that other education path, you add the certification piece somewhere in there. Because that's the part that gives you that on paper marketability. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I wouldn't even consider a degree <coughs> unless it had some kind of certification path totally. built into it. It doesn't make any sense yeah. anymore. So, Bart, sorry, just to to come back to this, if someone is new, like a CCNA, and they've done, say, A+, plus, Network+, plus, stuff like that, would you recommend going straight to associate level or is that too high? Do they need to do foundational or does that really depend on experience? So Amazon used to actually say you have to take tech essentials and then you have to do architect after that. Um, <clears throat> they don't have that hard requirement anymore. So it's up to you if you want to go and take the tests. They even removed the limit on the pro ones. You can go and sit for that right now which I'm not sure how I feel about that. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, if you're ready for it, fine, go ahead. That was the whole idea was, you know, buy the ticket, take the ride. Um, but I think that, yeah, those are going to be a good starting point. The associate really has um, a lot of review in it. So I think if I were me, David, I would go and take a look at things like the AWS um, white paper, or I would take a look at the, um, the, the test exam, the little mock exams that they have. Those questions will get you a real quick feel for how far off target you are. And then you can be like, whoa, 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 I really don't know half of these products. Yeah. You need to go back to the Tech Essentials course then. So that would be really the ideal one. When I So real quick on that one, David, before I started at CBT Nuggets, I was what they call an, uh, an AWS authorized instructor, which means I delivered their training material. At CBT Nuggets, I make my own material now. But at the, um, at the previous model, we always had people take Tech Essentials first. That was the course that they wanted to take. It gave them the opportunity to learn the information um, and it prepares them roughly for the cloud practitioner. So the Tech Essentials isn't an exam. It's, uh, it was a course that we offered that the cloud practitioner kind of goes along with. At CBT Nuggets, we have the cloud practitioner um, that's available and the other certs as well. So those would be the ones you'd really want to start with um, if you felt like the associate architect one was um, a little too complex. Yeah, and just, it, you know, the problem is when you're moving from, say, one vendor to another, the naming can be confusing at times. So um, the solutions architect, that would be probably the most aligned to someone who's a networker, like a CCNA, CCMP type person. Is that right or did I misunderstand that? You know, the the networking piece is present in almost every class. There's really okay. only like a couple of things that we teach that we used to teach in every class. We always taught basic access management. So every course always included like user identities and permission schemes and security policy stuff because it touches every course line. So we always put those topics in. Um, when you get into something like the networking piece, that was the other part we always talked about. We had to cover basic networking architectures because the thing is, David, if you're using a service like, um, like for example, Amazon has a product called, it's basically a managed Hadoop service called Elastic MapReduce. Yeah. It runs on EC2 instances. In order to understand how EMR does its job, you have to know about the virtual private cloud, the networks that they run in, the EC2 instances. So you can't do the big data class and talk about Hadoop on that unless you understand some of the networking pieces. So the associate 
and that cloud practitioner and the tech essentials material, they put a real big heavy focus on networking architectures. The last thing too, is that you heard me mention I had a network, uh, there's a network specialty cert that's out there now. Um, this one specifically is geared towards wide area connectivity. So most of that exam is about really complex border gateway protocol, um, administration, um, dynamic VPN tunnels. So it's this one right yeah, here, Yeah, right? it's over there on the far left, advanced networking. Yep, or far right. I'm sorry, mm, okay. my screen's backwards there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, it's over on the far right They're under specialties. Um, and that one is super advanced. Even in that one, we don't dig into the essential networking. We're going like, okay, we don't got enough time for that. We're going to talk big level topics. They talk about the, um, physical pathing stuff you can do. They have a service called direct connect. So if you're really a networking guy and you want to get into the real big networking stuff, yeah, your path would look like practitioner, solutions architect, and then maybe on to one of the advanced networking ones. Um, in the end though, networking, like I said, it's in all of it. So you've really got to know the networking stuff enough to be able to have these um, other conversations about the AWS products. Um, they all run in those same networks. So, so you're saying that we could... So you're saying we could skip the club or we could uh, skip the professional certifications. If you're just really focused on networking, you can go straight from solutions architect to advanced networking. Yeah. And it really kind of depends on what your position is. Um, remember that the architect certs are designed for people who are going to be doing problem solving and solution designing. So they're not necessarily people who are going to be sitting there sniffing packets, modeling traffic or creating um, throughput models. None of that stuff. You're talking about architects who are going to Chuck and David and saying, what do you want to accomplish? What are the main requirements of your problem and your service? How can I help align my products to fix those issues? So that's the thing to remember there, Chuck, is those those even the pro one. It's all about um, being able to help solve problems and doing that solutions architecting piece. Oh, <laughs>